now that we are ending, ending the liturgical year, nearing the end, we have this gospel, the gospel of the end of times. Speaking of the abomination of desolation, when it stands in the holy place. And so most often, for us, this points to the modern church. As they have created the abomination of desolation, they have created an abomination in place of the holy sacrifice of the mass. And they have held it up as something holy. But we know the truth, we know that they have destroyed the faith in many souls throughout Christendom. And for us, we have the true Mass, and so what is this parable to us, the abomination of des desolation? What is he speaking of for us when we, we have the true Mass, we have the sacraments? This is us rejecting all the errors of Vatican II. But I always try to focus not on Vatican II so much as we are here. So we all we all believe the truths about Vatican II. We all believe the truths about the modern church. So as we come here, I think it's better that we focus more on our on the truth, more on our catechism, more on our faith. And so what is the true mass for us? It's the purpose for which Christ came into the world. As God seeks the souls of mankind, He seeks all mankind's souls, and yet we were born in original sin because of the fall of Adam and Eve. And so we had to be redeemed. So we were redeemed on the cross. But all men need this perpetual sacrifice to sanctify them. A daily means of sanctification. Even twice a day, I will offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the true sacrifice of the cross and Calvary. Because Christ sees our, seeks our souls, he seeks holy souls. We cannot gain union with Christ if we don't make the efforts to sanctify our lives. So he's given, given us the means to sanctify our lives. Our, the ability to pray, to pray to God. The ability to sacrifice. The ability to seek union with him. As it says in the epistle today, Brethren, we've been praying for you unceasingly, asking you that may be filled with knowledge of God's will. Walk worthily of God and please Him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. <laughs> Faithful brethren, without God we can do nothing. We have weak, fallen human nature and we're inclined to sin. We need to sanctify that. So God gives us the means through our daily efforts, but also a great means of coming to us Himself and abiding with us. The holy sacrifice of the Mass is because Christ seeks our souls and wants to be with us. And so, in the Gospel message, love one another. And what is love but seeking each other's greatest good? And so he came into this world, he came into this world off, ready to offer sacrifice for the atonement of mankind. Ready to offer the sacrifice of Calvary, the sacrifice of the Mass to give himself to us. And that's what the abomination of desolation is. Is something standing in the place of Christ. A falsehood, a pseudo-sacrifice, a pseudo-mass. They don't even call it a sacrifice. Then if anyone say to you, Behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. False Christs and false prophets will arise and will show you some great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Some people would ask, well, why 
The people in the Novus Ordo are still very holy. God will still give the opportunities for all mankind to come to the truth. I would say also God can work outside of the sacraments. He's bound to the sacraments, but he can work out not by the sacraments. So he can work outside of them. He can give his grace where he sees fit, where there are just men trying to uphold truth but are led astray. So I realized when, during my time in the Novus Ordo, after we came from the Novus Ordo, that there are many people, good Catholics, they want to be Catholic in the Novus Ordo, but they don't know how, and they're not allowed. Things are, are abolished and, and persecuted. For example, my father tried to teach uh, the rosary and catechism. He wasn't allowed to do that. So people, they want the truth. They seek the truth. And God has given them the means to find it. And so too, the Mass is a road map for us. It shows us our true calling. Our true calling is to do God's will. God wills all men to save their souls and go to heaven, to sanctify ourselves. And we sanctify ourselves through sacrifice. And Christ has shown us the ultimate sacrifice. He laid down his life for us. And so in the Mass, we have the beautiful union of a sacrifice and a sacrament. That God gives us grace to overcome ourselves, to overcome our trials in this world. So that we can sanctify ourselves. So that we can make those sacrifices. Because we have a fallen human nature. And we're inclined to sin. Not virtue. And to prepare us for when he comes again. So again. As our Lord said. From this fig tree learn this parable. When its branch is now tender and the leaves break forth, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. We don't know the day that God's going to call us to heaven. And especially we don't know the day of the end of the world. No man knoweth but the Father. So what's important is we prepare ourselves every day be ready to go and meet our maker, to go and stand before God, before the judgment seat. And so what better way to prepare than to have Christ with you? And so God has given us the holy sacrifice of the Mass, that he will be with us all days, even to the consummation of the world, that we could have the means to come away from the errors of the world and seek truth and justice and virtue. Brethren, we have been praying for you unceasingly, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will, and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. May you walk worthily of God, and please Him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the knowledge of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.